What's going on? Welcome back to the Primal Podcast and to a new segment that we're introducing, which is a short form podcast, 20 to 30 minutes that we're going to release every two weeks in between our regular long form podcasts. In these short form podcasts, we're going to take 20 to 30 minutes to explore some tools, topics and concepts that you can immediately implement in your life to empower yourself and build that robust, resilient superhuman. For most of these episodes, I'm going to be joined by a guest who has knowledge and expertise in the specific topic that we're discussing, and we're going to condense that information into something that you can start to use to immediately empower yourself and improve your life. My first guest on these short-form episodes is Mr. Brian O'Loughlin from Movement 101. Brian's been on the podcast before, but in this episode, we are specifically discussing what he calls calendar training. Now, this might seem like a simple concept, but this is something that I've implemented over the last three or four months, and it has completely revolutionized how I spend every day and every week of my life. In this episode, you'll learn what calendar training is, how to implement it, the principles behind it, and how to become the master of your own time. Trust me, this is massive. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to our shared journey to find the answers to questions about health, wellness, nutrition, performance, life, and success, and to craft the most resilient, hardy, and happy humans you've ever seen. Welcome to the Primal Podcast. Mr. Brian O'Loughlin. Hello, sir. Welcome to the first of our short form Primal Podcast. It's a new, uh, new not, not an experiment, it's a new uh, new resource we're providing for our listeners. Yeah, I'm, uh, well, thank you for having me on and I'm excited to be part of this new resource you're providing. Well, you're like my tester, so if this doesn't work, I haven't offended anybody. I brought someone actually kind of okay. real on. Is that, my, is that my fault or your fault? I don't know. Okay. Um, but today we have our topic for today. Um, so just to give a, a brief explanation to people what we're going to be doing, this is short, actionable takeaway content that people can start to implement in their lives straight away and I'm going to be very very strict on this these are things that I personally do as well so I can vouch for and anyone who's going to come on and talk about them knows what they're talking about too so this is not I read it in a book and I'm going to tell everybody to do it and preach about it this is stuff that I'm implementing you're implementing and the circles that we kind of run and implement so this is a real actionable information that I personally know works so I can vouch for it and I think you're the same in this particular situation for today's topic. Yeah, definitely. And even with that as well, like there's underlying principles that I always kind of stand for. So yeah. again, not that what we're saying is gospel, but definitely the kind of underlying principles and the structure of this has helped me, has helped you. And we do both believe that this is life changing for pretty much everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. So without further ado, let's dive into topic number one, which is, I mean, you call it calendar training, but this has been life changing for me. And it's basically just a, a method for structuring your life essentially, but the things you are going to be doing from a day to day and a week to week kind of basis. Yeah, so we uh, do this with our Telos, our, our individual private coaching community, which you are part of. Uh, we call this how to create an authentic life you love, but essentially calendar training. Um, and as I mentioned, there's loads of different ways you could do it and kind of what you're trying to achieve from your own calendar. It's individual, it's based off your goals, uh, depending on whatever the hell you value and what you want to do. But there's underlying principles, three principles that we look at. Number one principle being a daily and a weekly calendar. The second principle being an intention for every single day and every single week. And then the third principle being a reflection for every single day and every single week. So what that may look like for each person can definitely be different. But I do believe them fundamental principles have to be in your calendar in order to, in order to progress at the things that are important to you. Brilliant. So why I think this is so important and why I said it was a life changer for me was because I am a relatively new business owner. And when you kind of, you're in a day-to-day structure or you work for somebody or you have a normal job or whatever, um, you kind of, there are guidelines and rules set out for you. But even in those situations, nobody takes care of your personal life. When you have a business involved in that as well, I mean, like you could come in into your business every day and literally do anything or anything that people yeah. throw at you and you become a yes man for everything. You've no structure, reason or rhyme. And the big thing for me was no clarity or reason. People would say, what are your goals? I've like, oh, fucking no idea what my goals are. I'm just going to kind of go with the flow. Why the calendar training changed my life was because, number one, from a business point of view, I knew, okay, for the next week, this is I've obviously long-term goals, but this is what I'm doing this week. This is what I'm doing these days. And not only that, at the end of each one of those days, I look back, did I do the thing? No. Why not? How do I change it? And all of a sudden, well, it wasn't really all of a sudden, I did the practices, but things started to be a lot more predictable. My days were a lot more uh, organized. 
But not only that, my personal time was more organized. So talk me through the uh, the two elements to this between personal and professional that kind of make up the, the backbone. Of yeah, this. well, you kind of covered it there because I'm an entrepreneur as well. So as you know, Dan, being an entrepreneur, there is no personal and professional. It is all just time. Just one thing. Yeah, so I burnt myself out on numerous occasions really badly, literally a nervous system breakdown where I couldn't physically work. I had to go to the bed. I was My mental health suffered just from saying yes to everything because I wanted to build a brand and do more and grow, grow, uh, grow the company. So this was a necessity for me to be able to literally build my brand and live my life and actually be successful in whatever I have done so far. So again, for me, being an entrepreneur, if you don't take ownership of your time, as you mentioned, you won't succeed professionally, but then you will actually end up having a negative impact on your personal life, you know, in terms of your mental health, the f- your friends and family, the people that you love, and then the things that you literally love to do, the conversations that you have, etc. So I did it as a necessity for me as an entrepreneur, but then we've helped people who aren't entrepreneurs because if you go back to it and people listening right now could easily have a calendar for their professional life. You know when your meetings are, you know what you're doing on a Monday, you have a deadline to meet in three months time. It's very clear, it's very structured, it's very organized. But then when it comes to our personal life, it's more ad hoc. You might put in a dentist appointment, you know the kids are here on a Saturday, but there's no real intent, there's no real reflection and there's no proper structure in place every day and every week. And what's that lead to? Well, chaos. Because we know as entrepreneurs, it is pure chaos and we have to structure that kind of, um, well, them days and them weeks. It's the same with your personal life. You have fat loss goals or performance goals or, again, even in your professional life, if you want to progress, you've got to make sure you're doing the action steps every single day, every single week that are going to get you towards them goals. So let's go to the first principle, I suppose, which would be daily and weekly practice. Yeah, perfect. And just before you do, I just want to clarify, this is not just advice for entrepreneurs because this applies to if you are working a job, the goals and intent and principles of that job don't necessarily align themselves with yours. So if you just go and do the job, you're not necessarily moving forward in your own life the way you want to go. So it's just as important if you have a job that you work for a company or somebody else to follow these same principles. I just want to clarify. You know, that. definitely. And even like that, the my calendar training is all based around my life. So it's just geared towards my personal. I'm going to cover the three things that I really focus on before my, my, my profession that Brilliant. are really important to me that I have to cover. But the first principle is daily and weekly practice. And what does that mean? Well, you've got a calendar every single day and you've got a calendar every single week. It's really important, them two distinctions. Because the one every single day is essentially action steps that you're taking every single day, today. What are the action steps? That's a real clear system that you're doing right now. And the week is essentially your vision. What do I want my life to look like this week? I'm going to action on this every single day. Because they're, they're two big different things. We know you can have all the plans in the world for the week but life takes over. Something ad hoc happens and you don't get that done in the day, which is fine. But you want to make sure that you're either bringing it into the next day or you're bringing it into the next week or whatever you're doing, but you've got some system there that you just don't let this thing fall by the wayside. Because remember, it's important to you, it's going to help you progress. And if you let life and chaos take over, well, you won't do it, you know? Uh, so that was a big real- realization for me. And I needed to have a daily calendar and I needed to have a weekly calendar. And for me, my calendar is kind of booked up roughly about 10 to 14 days in advance. You could do it longer, you could do it less, but I do believe everyone should have a daily practice and a weekly practice. Okay. That's the first principle. Perfect. Okay. And your daily practices, give us an example of what your daily and weekly versus weekly practices would look like. Well, first of all, so if we look at say the daily practice, I'm literally looking at the the day ahead. So we'll go to the other two principles of intention and reflection, but literally in the morning time, I'm looking at what I'm doing for the rest of of, of today. Okay. How how detailed do you go on that? How do you, like really simple, just in terms of say the three biggest outcomes for today. Okay. And that could be as simple as literally, I'm going to train today. I'm going to do something in work or I'm going to have a date night with my missus, whatever it might be. But there's three clear actual outcomes that I want to make sure I get done today and then I'm, I'm see where I am at the end of the day. You okay. know? But then, for example, the week, the week ahead of coming. So I'll just give you two re- really clear examples. Me being away on holiday for a week versus me launching a product in work for a week. They're just two different weeks. So my intent, my reflection, my action steps for that are completely different. So I've got to go, right, what's the week ahead? Am I switching off? Am I leading a team? Am I doing something I haven't done before? Because that's going to require a different me. So I'm just getting very clear of what is, is to come. But then if we look at it as well, well, what just happened last week? So the weekly is again, revising on what happened and looking forward. Because I'm learning from last week and I'm making sure I'm prepared for what's to come in the sense of just through my mindset. I don't have to know even the action steps, but I know yeah. this is a different week of me going away or me launching a product and go back to my daily. 
my daily then puts them plans in place of what's to come. So I may have daily kind of structured for seven days, but I'm not really necessarily too concerned with that once I know what's coming up that week and I'll focus on the daily. Because this is an issue that I had in the past with my mental health. When I'm feeling anxious, I'm worried about the future, or I'm, I'm feeling kind of depressed, or the past was easier, it just pulls you out of the present. And having that daily calendar goes, look, this is clear. I know what the week ahead is about. I know where I'm trying to get to. So what's today? Yeah. How can today get me closer? And then the other two principles will dictate that if I don't get it done, I do get it done or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And there's a cli- there's a cliche there in, in that kind of daily thing, but essentially your week is made up of units of days. And if you don't take care of those units of days and your days are made up of units of hours, if you don't ca- take care of them, there is no week because it's just right. All you have is right now, this next minute, this next hour, this next day. And I think some people listening might think, well, sure, I know what I'm doing next week. But there's a difference between knowing what you're doing and knowing what you want to do, between knowing what you have to do and knowing what you need to get done to move your life forward. So like, oh, you know, I have to go to work between nine and five. Yeah, but that's, well, okay, fine. You know, you have to go to work between nine and five, but what do you want this week to mean at the end of the week? Because at the end of a month and at the end of the year and every decade, these decisions decide that. But if you just let work decide it for you or your routine or your schedule or the kids decide it for you, you're going to be 10, 20 years down the road and you're still not going to have to move towards what your goal is. So that I, I got massive clarity around that. Um, it's not just, well, I know what the week is. Because you asked me, do you want to do the calendar training? I was like, well, I know what the week is next week. Yeah, but have you written it down? Have you decided why you want to do these things? And does it make sense in your head why you're doing them? I was like, well, no, but I know I have to go to work. And that was as far as I took it. So it's just, I think it's important to clarify that for people as well. Well, even then, if you look at the second principle, because that's yeah. what you mentioned there. So we have a daily and a weekly practice. And the second principle is intention for every single day and intention for every single week. So if we just look at that daily practice, so if I'm going in, I wake up in the morning and I literally will pick a word for my day ahead. So for example, I'll just use that, the uh, example I gave of being on holiday or launching a new product. That intention is different for both of them. One is me switching off. One is me being present with my, my child and, and uh, my family. One is pure enjoyment. If I'm launching a product in that day with my team, well, leadership might be the word that I use. I've got to lead my team. I've got to make sure everything's in place. I've got to make sure people are doing the work they have to do in order to make this launch successful. So there's just different intentions there straight away. And then the action steps that I'm obviously taking. I'm getting very clear on the intent of these action steps. Are these the right action steps in order for me to be successful for this day? And again, the action steps for my holiday, action steps for a product launch are completely different, you know? And again, if I look at the intention then, when I am on holiday, well, I can be really present. I'm very clear that I work really hard. I want to switch off today. I want to be present with my daughter. I want to make sure I'm giving my my wife time. Then again, with with, with leadership, am I communicating well? Am I being the best leader I can be? Are the action steps I'm putting in place actually the right things I should be doing? And the intention of both is different. And now if we look at the intention for the week, similar, but again, bigger picture thinking. So when I am taking the week off, switch off completely. So I know I'm taking the whole week off I can map out my days in between that, but I'm like, no, no, don't go to work. Don't go on your phone. The whole week is off because you need this time, downtime to recover, to rejuvenate, to come back stronger, feeling better and ready to attack towards the goals for the business, et cetera. Or again, I'll say a launch. If we're launching something on a Friday, there's so much work that has to get done Monday to Friday. So for example, my intention is going to be, I'm going to be very busy. I'm going to be leading this team. I may even communicate to my wife going, look, we have a huge launch coming up at the end of this week. I'm going to be maybe a little bit erratic. I may not be around as much. If I snap at you, please just give me two cents. I'm off Saturday and Sunday. And I tell you what, let's book dinner in Saturday night. That's something to look forward to. I'm working really hard and I can't wait to switch off and just give me a little bit of leeway. So now she understands that I'm under pressure. She understands a bit more stress, but there's clear intent here. I'm able to communicate that to her. She knows I'm not just being an arsehole. And then the third uh, principle I'll kind of even use again in both of them regards. But that intention, we use it massively for movement. How you move and the intent you move with, how you step forth into your day, into your week with intent is literally a game changer. It also helps, I think, with guilt around recovery. If you're a busy person, I'll use an athletic analogy now in a second and use the movement analogy, but if you're a busy person and you're you're busy, you're doing 9, 10, 11 hour days and you've got the kids and all that kind of stuff, the chances are if you have any time where you're supposed to be doing something for yourself, you'll probably feel a bit guilty if the kids go to bed and you're watching yeah. Netflix. And you, but if you plan, I'm going to take this time for myself because it's going to help me to recover or to be a better father or a better employee or business owner. When you get to the time to do it, you've booked it in, you have intent around it, you know where you're doing it, so you don't really feel guilty about it anymore. If you look at an athlete, 
you schedule your recovery sessions. Yeah. You don't feel bad on a day where you're not training because you scheduled it. You know, you need to recover to perform better the next day. So you're, the intent there is extremely clear. And again, it helps remove that guilt because I find what I personally felt and what a lot of people probably feel as well is if you're busy, there's guilt associated with recovery and rest and taking me time and spending time with the family and you're never really present or doing the thing properly. But if you plan it in the calendar, you put it there. What was the intent behind it? To recover so you could be better the next day. So it removed that element. And there is yeah. loads of facets to this. And I don't want to go too deep because obviously we're, we're short on time. But the, the, so for me, there's three big things that go into my calendar every single week before I look at work. And I only learned this by burning myself out and saying yes to everything, thinking that movement and movement 101 was the answer to everything. But it's more to me than just movement 101. So there's, there's three things. Number one, I have to strength train four times a week. They go in first four times a week. That's block book literally in there. So I'm getting that done because I can't be a better man or a leader or entrepreneur without actually physically training. Number two, time with my family, my wife, my child. I got to make sure I'm block booking time. Sunday, fun day, for example, we have, we'll do something different every single week. Again, time with, with, with my missus going on a, on a date. I love them. I want to make sure I have time for them. And that has to go in first uh, alongside sorry, no, uh, number three, which is five to 10 hours of business movement, personal development, study, reading, something like that. Again, I'm going to literally block book that time because if I don't do them three things, I'm not me. I'm not able to literally step forth in and build a team or lead a team or I'll literally grow movement 101 because around after them three things go in, I'll then put in my calendar for my clients. I'll put in my, my stuff of what's going on. But again, it's not being selfish because I can't be better. I can't be the best me without these things. And that's what I mean about this. It goes down towards your values, what you're trying to do with your life. Are you literally creating a life and living a life every day and every week that you love? And that's what this does. It's not just about being successful and being more. It's going, well, how am I, what am I action on every single day? Is this literally what I want to do? I think it's another incredibly important point there because some people who listen to this type of presentation on calendar trying to stuff like that, you're just after outlining 10 hours of personal development and movement and business development, four training sessions, time with your family. Most people are like, that's 30 hours and I don't have, where am I going to find 30 hours in a week? But you'll only find it when you sit down and you start writing this out and you plan the can You realize, oh, I can put this here, I can put that. You can't do that unless you sit down and do this exercise. You have to do the exercise. Yeah, but also like, this is giving you a real understanding of what you do want from life. Yeah. That's the biggest You're thing. You're getting though. clarity around that. Exactly. Yeah. But that's the whole point. Because like, yeah. everyone's will look different. That's all that matters. So it's not that you do this calendar training, so you're going to be successful in business or have this or have that, have whatever. What do you want? And I, I've said to you in the past, people lack a vision for their life. People lack a vision for their business because they simply don't take the time, effort, and energy to sit down and go, what do I actually want? Do you know why? Because it's quite a difficult thing to do. It's actually a very scary thing to do. Yeah. There's massive resistance to that. And again, it's, I know this seems like a simple calendar training, but it was a, a tool and a conduit for me to actually, because you can't, I can't plan the calendar. I was sitting there, I was like, I can't plan this calendar unless I figure out what I want to put in it. Yeah. I don't know what I want to put in it yet. Yeah, yeah. So this is all fucking well. But so you're forced to actually think, well, what do I want out of this week? Because there's, there's all my commitments. It's not filling up all the week. Got to put other things in here now. What, what, what are the things I want? So yeah, that, that, that kind of helps with that clarity around what you want. So that's number two, that's intent. Okay, so we've, we've, Booked our days, booked our weeks. We know what we're doing and our intent. What's, what happens now? Reflection. So number three uh, principle is reflection. So I'm going to reflect every single day. I'm going to reflect every single week. So the daily one is really simple. The, the intention for the day, the outcomes that I wanted for today, well, did I get them done? Yes or no? If I did, brilliant. Let's move on to tomorrow. If I didn't, okay, is there anything I have to take over to tomorrow to make sure I get it done. So I haven't got it done now, it's absolutely fine. I can move to, to, to tomorrow. And I have a system as well. I can't move past that thing the next day until it's done. So I'm not allowed to progress to my next day until I have that action step done. And that's just a standard I have for myself because it's my own fault for not getting it done. So I get that done the next day. Also, what did I learn about today? So I've experienced today. So I thought it was going to go some way, but actually this happened and this happened, this happened. From, from what I know now, what can I take into tomorrow to be better? Because we all make mistakes. And it's not the end of the world. But do you learn from that mistake? If you keep making, so the biggest thing with this training gives you awareness. If you keep seeing the same things pop up, make a change. Because you're not progressing towards the things that you want to. And the exact same for the week then. Normally on a Saturday afternoon, I will have a intention practice and reflective practice at the same time. But I'm reflecting on the week that has just gone by. So again, I use the two things. The holiday. Did I switch off? Did I really enjoy it? Did I stay away from work? Did I get done what I said I wanted to get done? And what's going to happen the next time? Or what, what I learn from that? What's good, bad, or indifferent? Or again, a lunch. 
What was good about that launch? How can we make it better the next time? How can I free my time up? So it's always just reflecting back on what happened, good, bad, or indifferent, but always with the intention of, can I learn from what happened today? Can I learn from what happened this week and take it into tomorrow or take it into next week? I don't know which is more important, the intention or, or, or the reflection, but I think the reflective practice gives you a bit more awareness originally with the three principles. So they would kind of remain the same, I suppose. I think that's kind of like saying what's more important, mind or body. Yeah, or chicken and egg, what comes first? Chicken I don't know. Yeah. same fucking thing. Two big words jump up for me, would you speak in there? Accountability and honesty. They were the two barriers I had to come up against with this reflection practice because, yeah, okay, have the, the, the week and the days planned out, now have the intent behind those, but getting to the end of it, did I do it? Uh, well, no, because this came up and that came up. And, uh, you, uh, you have to be honest with yourself and accountable to yourself if this is going to work because you can lie to yourself and just do the same thing the following week. But that's the best thing though because the idea is that if you're lying to yourself and you're not progressing, it's going to be fairly evident fairly soon. Yeah. You're lying. And you, the, the biggest thing with this is that you're going to get that awareness eventually. And when it, when it comes to change, if the pain is big enough, you'll go, okay, fuck this. I'm going to change now. Because every time I do this or I don't do this or whatever, I'm not progressing. And this is the beauty of life, I think, in general. It always comes back to the responsibility of you, the responsibility of me to succeed in whatever we want to succeed in. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Doesn't mean that we're always going to succeed. But the action steps that you take, the systems that you have, no one can do it for you, you know? And this is a fundamental practice for me. I couldn't be able to live my life. I couldn't be able to create like I do. I couldn't do what I do genuinely without this practice it's been life changing for me a common barrier with these type of exercises for many people me included and I'm going to ask you if it was for you is starting it and not getting immediate results and giving it up I feel like there's so much self help stuff out there now and books and things you can try and atomic habits and all that kind of stuff and most people will start and nothing will happen after two or three yeah. weeks so they give it up that was definitely an issue for me but I kind of kept at it was that an issue for you at the start? yeah 100% and actually so a, a, a staff member of ours Sue Jane I started to give her the calendar training about two or three weeks ago she did really well initially and had such a busy week last week she did nothing so it's very similar to fat loss or movement doing something is better than nothing so let's break it down and make it really simple let's begin a weekly practice so once a week have an intention and have a reflection it's so easy so all you're looking for is 10 to 20 minutes every Saturday, every Sunday, any, whatever day you want to do it, but don't overcomplicate. We can't go from zero to 100 straight away. I'm not expecting you to change a daily, a weekly practice, intention, reflection, and be perfect all the time. So make sure it suits your lifestyle. And a really simple thing is to break it down as simply as possible. Just by having a weekly practice, weekly intention, weekly reflection, you're getting more awareness. And as you begin to see the fruits of your labor, you go, well, I can actually do a little bit more. But then as I mentioned well, what are the three things you have to get done every single week to be the best you? That's something else you could do. So that, you, that means training or eating a certain way or going to play a sport or going to see your friends. Like these things are very important to you. So what are they? And get them into your calendar every single week. So as I mentioned, it, it can look differently for different people, but like any kind of habit change, you want to make it as simple as possible for you to literally action on because that's what matters. Once you're consistent with something, we can always stack on top of that and give you more to work on. Uh, so something something somebody could do right now, listen to this, actionable, is pick one intent for the week to come. Doesn't yep. even have to be this week, next week, because this might go out on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, of course. Pick one intent, yep. and then at the end of that week, reflect on that intent. Yep. It can be as simple as that to start it off. Now, we have questions that we give clients, you know, with five, six, seven questions. Here's because, the movement one-on-one plug coming up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I tell us. But you can use any questions. But again, an intention for today, a really simple thing is like, what's your word for today? Or what's your, your uh, affirmation for the week? And then the reflection is literally, how did this week go? Did I get uh, the things done that I wanted? It? If not, do I have to bring stuff into next week? And what can I learn about this week? But add your own, you know? But I think it's really simple. I think them three things work well. What do you really value? Are you putting them things in your calendar? Are you actioning on these things that you claim yourself are very important to you? Because there's so much to this calendar training. A really simple thing is say no more. Say no more before you even look at your calendar. So we always say yes. I said yes to everything, think and grow the brand, uh, but I can't keep saying yes to anything. That takes my time, effort, and energy. Once I say yes to something, I say no to everything else. So a really simple thing for your calendar is to say no. And you can now fill in something that you really want to do in that time because you're not doing something that ultimately you don't want to do. That simple word transformed me from thinking I'm so busy this week to 
I've actually fucking loads of time here. The whole eighty <laughs> yeah. twenty thing. I just had to say no to more things. I was like the amount of shit I was saying yes to that filled up all this time that I was supposed to be doing my calendar and my work and stuff like that. As soon as you start saying no, you open up a whole door to yourself for stuff that you actually deem important. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And, and, so, and, and that's the thing with this though, because saying no can be uncomfortable. It's a practice, a system you have to get better at. Same with the calendar. You know, these things take time, take effort, take energy to get good at. But once you begin to implement it, you begin to see, wow, this is freeing me up. I actually have a bit more energy. I'm now working on the things that I want to work on. And once you get that, them little glimmers that you see after a week, after a month, it's like, whoa, there's a lot more here. I can begin to add on to this. Yeah, that's the key. You, you will get to a point if you commit to this where you, it starts to make sense to you because these words are all great. And I said earlier on about people trying habits and stuff like that. But you, there'll be a point where you're like, oh, yeah. fuck, I have a bit more time this week or yeah. I feel a bit better this week. Or you, you'll be doing your reflection like, wow, I actually... I, fin- I finished the to-do list or I did all the things I well, said Well, e- even that, do. so we call this creating an authentic life you love. Yeah. You then get the power going, wow, no, I'm actually creating, yeah, yeah, I'm creating here. I'm in control. Yeah, yeah, I'm in control of my life. Now, it doesn't make it any easier. You still got to do the work. It's still a lot of effort, time and energy to do it. But you're like, I can say no to this. I can put something in here. I can go and do this thing. You know what I mean? And I know it's in my power to do that. So it's like, what do I want to do? I have an option here. There, it begins to grow and yeah. expand. And I think this is key. It's not Brian O'Loughlin or Dan telling you what to do now. It's just, This is a tool that you can use. You tell you what to do. You figure it out. And you implement it. Then you'll be in control. Then you've th- That's real power. That's empowerment. Yeah. Because yeah. chaos is life. Biz- chaos, chaos is life. Yeah, but li- uh, life is life chaos. Life is chaos. Yeah. Chaos is life. But, but it is so. And then, but, but business is also chaos. Yes. So if we don't control that chaos, it literally will control us. Yeah. And it's always about uh, that Carl Jung quote, Make the unconscious conscious or make the conscious unconscious or unconscious conscious. What is it again? I don't know. Anyway, you're basically saying... Oh, the, but Pat Dively said it the other day. Make the... Make the oh, Jesus Christ, you only said it the other day. Make the unconscious conscious or you will do it and call it faith or something Exactly. Like that. So yeah. basically you're saying like, I haven't got the time or these things just happen to me, whatever. But when you begin to have these practices and systems in place, you just build that awareness and you go, yeah. okay, I'm actually doing things that I, I was unconscious at the time of, but I'm building that awareness now. And once you have that, you go, okay, I have the power to change this, to say no to this. And you begin to go... Okay, I can actually, there's a lot more I can do here. You're not the leaf on the river. You're actually standing there in control of the yeah. flow of the river. Yeah. And that's really empowering. Yeah, it's really empowering. empowering. I mean, yeah. I, I, it's not that, it, again, it gets any easier, but it does make you better. Yeah. So you're now able to step forward into a bit of discomfort, a little bit of fear, or again, work on them goals that are maybe a little bit bigger than they are right now because you're like, okay, yeah, there's something here. There's momentum here. I'm building here. I'm getting stronger and better here. Yeah. Another very important point. You're full of gold today. This is class. <laughs> that coffee must be fucking great. Uh, it, it doesn't get easier, but you get better. That is the key behind all these tools. That's why we're calling them tools. It doesn't get easier. It gets harder. And I mean, from a business perspective, and I don't want to keep banging on about entrepreneurs and stuff like that, but you've constantly said this to me. You make more money, the business grows, you have more staff on that's much harder. That's harder than where, where you are right now, but you get better at managing it. You have systems and the calendar training is a system that you don't have to be a business owner to use yeah. for your life. Life will get hard. It'll be hard shit. But when you have a system, you'll be better at managing that hard shit. You're not yeah. changing the world. You're changing your own perception of the world. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I think that's quite important as well because like you're not necessarily, like I said, you get better and it doesn't get easier, but you kind of then lean into the hardship. Yeah. You know, like you go like, Okay, I know there's growth and the other side. I get why I'm doing it. this. Yeah. Again, it's a really simple analogy that we always use the gym. We know we got to push our bodies. We're not going to be a little bit sore the next day. We know we have to adapt, recover, in turn to get stronger. It's the exact same with like personal development or organizing your life or reaching your goals. It's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. But as you begin to see the results, you go, okay, I get it now. Yeah. I know what this is now. I've got to lean in. As you get stronger in terms of your systems, then you can lean in better. That's a good analogy, yeah. yeah. It's like people, I love, oh, I love feeling sore after the gym because yeah. I know I've worked hard. Exactly. You look at that pump, you look, you look playing ball and killing yourself in that pitch knowing I've left it all out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And that's the beauty of it because you know deep down that like there's growth on the other side of that. Yeah. Because you've experienced that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's quite uncomfortable to go into some, something new. So having a system, it makes it easier gives you a little bit lighter to walk into that dark cave. You know what I mean? And yeah, then it begins to kind of get yeah. a bit brighter as you kind of keep walking in. I love that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just thinking here of any any other barriers. Uh, something I used to do all the time was, oh, what's the perfect calendar tool? I was like, I can't start this till I have the perfect fucking calendar yeah. tool. There is no perfect tool. You can use Google Calendar, or I call a piece of paper and yeah. a pen, whatever. Whatever suits you. Yeah, because yeah. it is it is something that was an excuse for a long time. I can't do I can't do this because I don't have the perfect tool. Or I'm gonna have to give myself an entire day to sit down now and do it. There's all these different excuses you'll give yourself. 
to stop this resistance. That's, I was just trying to say, it's essentially resistance. It's resistance. Because it's, 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 it's new, it's, it's uncomfortable, new. it it's requires different. you to do things when you don't really want to do it. So I have my calendar in Google Calendar literally laid out pretty much 10 days, 14 days in advance. Yeah. And every morning, every evening, I write. So I'll just write that out because I like writing that, but I'll have it literally systemized and organized in my calendar of what the day, the week looks like yeah. itself. Uh, but again, do whatever you want to do. And just what would be an actionable Google Calendar and iCal because they're free and they integrate with each yeah. other. If you're a Samsung or an Android person, Google Calendar. And if you're Apple, Google Calendar, which integrates with iCal. They are the only tools you need. And there's loads free. of journals and reflective. Millions. And ten, you yeah, know, yeah, so, yeah. As you, so if you're struggling with questions, not that kind of crack. Pen and paper. Yeah, there's so whatever. much that you can use. Exactly. So like, don't overcomplicate it. Again, what you're looking to get is a consistent practice weekly. And if you can, then add in the daily on top of that. And having an intent, having a reflection, just builds awareness. And from there, all you need is consistency and time. Beautiful. Okay, before I let you go, give us a quick run through again of the uh, the three principles. So uh, every single day, every single week, you want to have a calendar. With that, in the daily and the weekly practice, you have an intention for the day, for the week ahead, and you have a reflective practice for the day and the week just gone by. And what that looks like is quite unique, is quite individual, but I do believe them principles are key to really kind of gain control and begin to work towards them goals that are important to you. Beautiful. Mr. Brian O'Loughlin, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. We'll, we'll see you again very soon. Yes, sir. Get on those calendars, people. Boom, that's the first of our short form podcast done. If you liked this episode and you want to see more like it, make sure you get in touch on Instagram at Primal Pro or drop us a comment under the video at YouTube. We get back to all the comments. We talk to all of our subscribers and our followers. So make sure you get involved and throw us any suggestions of anything that you'd like to see us talk about in the future. Thank you again to Mr. Brian O'Loughlin and see you next time. <laughs>